Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to weather this Alco S4. We're going to go through the materials, the techniques, what to weather, and why we are weathering in the first place. So materials, we have your usual acrylic paints and we have chalk pastels. Now before you click away, if you never work with chalk pastels, it's really easy, just give it a try. When it comes to the paints, I'm probably going to use this charcoal gray and or a thin version of this. Uh, black for the wash on the locomotive. I'm not going to use these in any other way shape or form as I generally like to weather it with chalk pastels. So what to do with chalks which ones you're going to need? Well it's good to have a whole range like this and if you're a cheapskate just like I am see if they have a reduced price box where all of them are broken because it doesn't really matter. You're going to need a variety of colors most notably uh, black, dark gray, light gray, potent rust color, a older rust color, and then a sandish color depending on the region that you are in. So it's fairly easy as you see the black is almost finished and you just scrape it off with a knife as such. Another material I use often is this brown sharpie. As with this locomotive it's not necessary but with cars sometimes you want to have the side of the wheel colored as well so I do that with this sharpie. Now that was the material so how are we going to apply everything? Well first off you got your usual suspects, you got your brushes. I have a whole variety of these. Just go to your local hobby store and get these packs where you can buy five or ten at the same time. Some of these, like these, I absolutely abused. These are still actually good to put on quite a lot of chalk onto one location. And then these are for the finer details, especially this that one that's cut off. I really like this one to add uh, rust streaks, either in a sideward manner like that or in a longer stretch manner like that. And get some brushes, different materials. These ones are uh, softer. These are actually quite great to just feather out if you added a little bit too much of the chalk material. Secondly, we have sponges. I have a few different types. Just go to your El Cheapo dollar store where you get the brushes from and get some sponges. These are, I think, called makeup sponges. So they're very, you can see it, they're quite dense. Here's why I tore it off. So you can get a very fine rust structure on whatever you want to have rust on. And if you want a bit more chorus, you can see it here. Get these, just your kitchen cleaning sponges. And for the chalks as well, we have these, I think they're makeup brush applicators. You see one, you see one too. They are great to, to pick up the chalk and to deposit it on a certain area. These again are from your local $1 store and you get 10 in a pack or something like that. Then you'll need a bowl with some water and or a second bowl with some alcohol to mix with the paint and or the jocks. That's about it. You will need finally uh, and lastly, but not leastly, a uh, matte clear coat spray can. We'll use this several times as you will see. So a small addition, you will also want some blue masking tape and an X-Acto knife. I forgot to use that, so you'll see what's going to happen later. Because with the masking tape, what you want to do is cut pieces out in the shape of all the windows that you don't want to have sprayed to prevent them from getting the clear coat on it. What and why are we going to weather? You need to get the uh, time frame and the location uh, correct for your weathering. So I am weathering the transition era. So this locomotive will be around five to 10 years old. Nevertheless, I'm still going to give it a good grime because it operates in the Pennsylvania area, which is very humid, wet and cold in the winter. And I guess in the end 40s and beginning 50s, the quality of paint and the maintenance is not uh, as it is today. So depending on the region, here are the other colors that you might want to get. In the northeast side, it's probably more a brown earthy color. In the southeast, it's probably more reddish because the soil is more clay based and in desert far west areas you're looking more like a white dusty color and in the midwest we got a more tanned desert slash earth tone finally the northwest you'll probably be more like a brown earth color let's look at this locomotive and let me just demonstrate a little bit what we're going to do this is my earth color because i'm modeling the northeast and we're going to want to have this all over the trucks here. You do want to have it evenly. You don't want to have it only on the left or on the right side or the front or the back of the locomotive. That doesn't make any sense. We're going to look at rust. There's a lot of rust on a locomotive. The couplings will probably be rusted out. We're going to have rust on the brake pads here. And as per the prototype uh, images, I want to have rust on this running board. I probably have some rust here, slight on the roof. Some rust coming out, dripping from some of these panels right here. You'll probably see some rust coming from the roof here as well slightly. There's some rust on the treads right here as well. A little bit of rust on, on the top and also the railings would be a bit rusty. So now the uh, ballast dust. This will also be 
in the same area here and all the way down. It's always good to layer certain colors because you do want it to all blend in a little bit. So we'll put that there. And then let's look at the more oily, grimy side of things. The top is not represented in this image, but I will do want to have the top of the smoke stack uh, quite black and a little bit in this area around the smokestack. As this is a switcher, it will be hanging around and waiting a little bit. So the smoke will just accumulate here and then fall onto the locomotive itself. So you do want to have this drip down a little bit on the sides, the same place, but not too much of the black. Because we also have this more grimy color. So I would want to have this air outtake of the grimy color because this is a uh, fan ventilation. So the air would go in here and come out through here and all these vents here. So I would want to have some grime here in these areas as well. I would probably brush this in a more, say, vertical manner, because you need to also think how would the grime accumulate? How would the rain take the grime down from the top to the sides? And it can be started from the vents here as well. And we'll have a little bit of grime here, not too much. This is a roof, so it will be protected from most of the rain. So voila, that's the plan. This is what we're going to do. Now let's do it on the model. So here we are. Here's the model. The first thing that we're going to do is actually not on this chart. What we need to do is we need to dull this down. This locomotive has been in the sun for almost 10 years, so it's not going to be this shiny black. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with these colors and then slowly work my way down until it's faded enough to my taste. Then at the same time, I might slowly work in a little bit of darker rust like this, the brownish rust, as everything will have a little shimmer of rust over it. Let's do that first. I just get a softer brush to get in these corners. You don't want to brush it all away. You want to leave some on there because it creates a nice texture. And that's in the end what we're doing. We're adding texture. Now I'm probably going to leave on quite a lot of this rust on the uh, walkways here on the right and on the left and the top. Because these walkways, because it's a cheaper model, they don't have any texture added to it. Normally there should be this uh, metal grid texture there, but there's not. So we're just going to fill that in with rust. I'm actually fairly happy at this stage. So I think this will be the base coat for now. And why do I say base coat? Because I'm actually going to coat this with the matte clear as discussed later. So then we can add the layers and the colors as put here on the chart on the locomotive. If I do that now without coating it, I'll probably just brush everything off in a way. And that's not what we want. Okay, I think we're done for now. Don't want to touch it too much. Yeah, great. I'm going to put it down somehow to the spray booth. And now you can learn from the mistakes I make so you don't have to. You see, I totally forgot to mask up the windows so they got foggy with the matte clear coat. As this video is about weathering, we're just gonna move forward. It's not gonna be easy to clean this. I probably have to polish the plastic down a bit. So we'll do that in another video. So here's the results. The first thing you might notice is that a lot of the weathering effect has disappeared. This is normal. The clear coat will take about half of the chalk's coloration off. But the overall effect is what I wanted. It's dulled down a bit, has a little bit of a, a gray grimy feel to it, and some rust on the, the plank boards as well. Now it's time for a wash. Normally I would do this first, but like I said, it's quite a dark model. So that's why I pre-grimed it first. And as it is a dog model, normally I would take a black, but I'm actually going to take a gray. Don't need a lot, just a little bit like that. And as I am in the northeast region, I want some kind of brown in there. I don't know, I'm thinking to add a little gray. Never done that, so let's just see. So as I want a little bit of gray, I'm just going to open it up, dab a little bit. I'm going to just pre-mix this a bit, see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks nice and grimy. Could be a little bit darker, actually. So just going to get some black. Voila. Nice little mix. And it's a wash, so we're just gonna add some water. Some people add alcohol. Here we go. Just like that. Plunge it in. Don't be scared. So as you see, you wanna go in a uh, vertical motion with your brush strokes. Uh, ideally, you wanna go downwards, but because there's this railing here that I can't remove, I cannot go like this. So I'll then have a vertical motion in the up direction. That's also perfectly fine. Now, another thing I wanna point out is the lighting. Normally, I have a, a studio lighting on when I do my recordings. But as lighting is so important when it comes to uh, weathering and coloration, 
I actually opened the curtains a bit and let daylight in. So don't worry about all the excess water. You see there's actually quite a lot. So just get a tissue, soak that all up. So now we're gonna have to wait until this dries up a bit. But you can already see from the top, it's going to be quite cool. So here we're back, the wash is dry. And as you can perhaps see, you can see it best here on the top. It left a residue around all the details. Furthermore, the whole model has lost its black shine. It's lost its blackness altogether. It became a bit lighter, but we're now going to look at the details. So we're going to add a lot of rust around the bottom half and the brakes. Uh, some more rust here on the shutters and rust lines where the water would have come down and brought some rust down, some rust more on the top. That will be sharper rust and then I'm going to do the process again with lighter rust. So what do I mean by sharper rust and what do I mean by lighter rust? This I will consider as a bit sharper and this as a bit uh, lighter and also a bit older rust. So I'm going to use both just to blend it in a bit. So the first technique I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to wet in it and then dip it into the chalks and then this will paint on very nicely. So in my case, I want to do the brake shoes. So that's that. Now I'm just going to see how much is on there. I'm going to just get it off a bit and do kind of a dry brush technique. You see that you're getting puddles. Basically it means you're doing it wrong. You should have a little bit less water on your brush. It's, it's really a fine line between dry brushing and applying dry chalks. So just if you get lost, what are we doing right now? We are just adding rust details. I'm not going to paint the entire locomotive rust. I'm just adding the details on it. So let me just give an extra example here. Get the brush. You see there's two hinges here on this cabinet. Let's say I want to have a rust streak down off of one of the hinges. Get the brush, paint it a bit rusty and streak downwards. Just like that. Do the other one as well. If you want to accent it a bit more, just add a bit more. Dab it. So let's try a new technique that I saw someone else do on the interweb. I'm gonna get this 0.5 millimeter uh, fancy pencil, sorry. I'm gonna apply this to the stairs right here and the front and the back, because as this is a switcher, the brakeman and the uh, switchman will be walking up and down. They'll probably be walking on there so much that the rust wears off. So it will be more of a metal color. So that's what I'm gonna simulate here. If you can see that, it just brings a little bit of shininess to it. So after all the detailing, what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to add, uh, again, a layer of rust everywhere. We're going to do some sandy color here on the bottom and maybe an extra color of older darker rust here on the bottom as well. And then uh, at last add black grime to the uh, top. And then maybe try to brush the grime down, that grayish grime on the side. <laughs> So here I put on far too much rust color chalk. So I'm just gonna brush it all off, just like that. So that was all the rust. Now we're gonna add some sandish color for the bottom. This might seem quite extreme, but we'll all see, wash away slowly and gently and just fade into this more yellowish color that we have in the bottom right now. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of medium gray as a uh, ballast dust. That would be around about here. It's gonna add some more of the dark rust here at the bottom. So that basically means we have three colors. We have the dark rust then, then we have the uh, the soil color, and then we have more of the ballast uh, dirt color on it. And then last but not least, I'm going to do black, a really dirty, grimy black, especially on the top, especially around this area where the exhaust is. This is, I believe, the air intake, so there won't be that much black and grime around there. So this is where we stand now before we're gonna give it a clear coat. It's very grimy, totally unrecognizable from where we started off. Let's give it a coat. So this is the result after the spray can. As you see, a lot of the effect uh, has been lost. I'll make some nice images uh, later on on the layout so you can see it in its natural habitat. So what I'm doing now, just to add a little bit more, already started on the top, is to get a wet brush, dip it in the black, and just add more black pigment here around the exhaust, the top of the smokestack. If you look at the prototypical photos, it actually is silver like this, with just some black at the top. Now pay extra attention to the side of the smokestack. You want that thing to be black throughout. So one step I don't hear a lot of people about is cleaning the wheels after the painting. Come on, see that clear coat really affected the conductivity. So the next pro tip, you might be able to see it here. The connectors that gets power from the wheel to the inside, so the power takeoff 
is this piece of metal and it basically pushes to the outside of the flange uh, on every single wheel. So you need to clean not only the surface of the wheel, but you need to clean also the inside. So that this connecting piece right there that just slides uh, over the wheel uh, it gets a good contact as well. So I just cleaned all eight wheels and you can see quite a lot of grime came off. You can also see quite of it is from the weathering as it is not black but also has some uh, coloration to it. Now let's give it a test drive. 